Well, again, uh, we want to thank our Heavenly Father for another opportunity of uh, studying His Word and uh, understanding His will uh, upon our lives and uh, what uh, He will uh, want us to be doing in such a time as this. Um, we started a series on uh, 1888. It is uh, uh, diagnosis, uh, analysis, and uh, solution. And uh, we have done uh, two uh, presentations, and this is the third presentation. Today, we are going to deal uh, with uh, uh, part three or part C, the message and the, its opposition, and uh, how I'm praying that uh, the Lord will continue blessing us and sanctifying us and just speaking to our souls to know what we are supposed to do at such a time as this and so uh it is sabbath time in uh, east africa i know there are some other parts where people are waking up and some are in midday some are in the night hours i welcome you to this presentation wherever you are tuned in you can follow the series on uh, uh our uh, on our youtube channel that is uh, Gospel Sound as uh, the Kindling Reformation. And uh, if you miss the other presentations, you can go watch. And so I'd like us to pray and be able to continue uh, into today's uh, message. That is uh, uh, part C, where we are looking at it's the message, uh, and uh, it's our uh, opposition. So shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, thanksgiving and praises be unto thee for all that you do for us and uh, the privilege of uh, being called your sons, even the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary for to extend our probation on this earth that uh, we may reconsider our ways and scrutinize our hearts. And Lord, we pray that uh, you may give us the strength to do that which is uh, the perfect will in this hour. Bless us as we go through this and uh, help us to learn from our history. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And so we look at uh, the message itself and uh, it is continued uh, opposition. And uh, I'd like to bring a statement. And as I began, I said I'll be looking more on the history of uh, Minneapolis, but I'll borrow so much from the people who are there. And uh, I'll borrow so much from the people who are there and borrow heavily from Sister White, who was uh, part of uh, the message, Wagona and uh, Etijones. Not uh, wasting a lot of time. Uh, I'd like us to just pick it from where we left, and uh, Lord will bless us. And uh, this is uh, a place we left in the message. Yeah, this is where we left uh, in our previous presentation. You can catch up with it uh, on YouTube channel. And uh, this is from uh, 1888, 348, paragraph four, that is uh, MS 5, 1889. I have heard the question asked, what do you think of this light that these men are presenting? Why I have been presenting it to you for the last uh, 45 years, the matchless charms of Christ. This is what I've been trying to present before your minds. When brother Wagner, brought out these ideas in Minneapolis. It was the first clear teaching on this subject from any human lips I had heard, excepting the conversations between myself and my husband. I have said to myself, it is because God has presented it to me in vision that uh, I see it so clearly and they cannot see it uh, because they have never had it presented to them as I have. And when another presented it, every fiber of my heart said, Amen. So this was not uh, 
something new to the church. It was something that um, she had been presenting for some time, but uh, because uh, the minds of the brethren had not uh, been uh, accustomed to what uh, the Lord was speaking to the church, the message seems something new and uh, uh, it brought an opposition. It brought an opposition that was unnecessary. But I'd like to fast forward to some time and uh, just uh, consult uh, uh, Washburn on this uh, issue and uh, what he had to say on this issue, that uh, what was actually happening. I'd like you to hear what uh, Washburn had to say about uh, this matter that uh, was going on. I, I'm just fast forwarding and then uh, we shall come back and uh, see what um, the Lord uh, uh, wants to teach us on this session, the message and its uh, opposition. And so Washburn says, uh, and uh, this is Washburn uh, who lived between 1863 to 1955, and he was a young man of age of 21 at the time that the Minneapolis conference uh, happened. Washburn was the son of a uh, Sabbatarian Adventist pioneer, Calvin Washburn, who had joined the Advent movement during the Millerite movement of the 1840s. As a youth, J.S. Washburn had uh, many opportunities to meet the founding pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Washburn claimed a rich SDA heritage. He was converted by Jane Andrews at 11, baptized by James White at 12, and began preaching advancing at uh, the age of 21. He worked in Iowa Conference. It was from here that uh, he came as a delegate to the 1888 General Conference session. The spiritual struggle that had uh, occurred at this meeting left him groping about his own spiritual life a problem that he later sorted through by counseling with uh, Ellen White. About uh, this time, he also began a correspondence with Miss White that lasted through the rest of her life until her death in 1915. Rejuvenated uh, spiritually by the message of righteousness by faith, Washburn went as a missionary to England. Up until that time, the work in England had been struggling, but his creative tactics for growing crowds and holding their attention literally changed the face of the church there from a small company of believers to literally 100 who were converted at time. There is evidence that British Adventism may not have survived, but for his contribution as a powerful and creative evangelist, in addition to his intense study of the spirit of prophecy and desire to obtain everything that Sister White wrote, Washburn's amazing memory enabled him to memorize much of the Bible and spirit of prophecy writing. So he is a young man who is uh, confused by uh, everything that is going on in Minneapolis, and he wants to understand the truth of the matter. Continued on, we are told that uh, by 1918, he claimed to have memorized Revelation, Romans, James, and Second Peter. He noted that his memory improved with the study of the Bible and uh, of uh, spirit of prophecy. By 1948, he claimed to have memorized the entire New Testament. That is a feat to achieve to the generation of today at the age of 21, where actually even memorizing a verse clearly has become a problem because many people are hooked up with things that uh, have robbed them of uh, the ability to memorize even a verse in the Bible. And so at the age of 21, this uh, young man is able to memorize the Old Testament and was working towards committing Isaiah to memory. There is a most remarkable story regarding Washman, and this is the story that I want us to listen in 1888 and Ellen White. Uh, J. Washburn was uh, a nephew of uh, George I. Butler. You remember that that was the president of the General Conference during the Minneapolis session, and uh, was 26 years old in the year of 1888. The year when Brother Wagoner and John is delivered to the Adventist Church, the special message of righteousness by faith. Remember, Butler became sick and uh, missed the session, and this is uh, a nephew, and he was confused by what was going on. His own uncle could not uh, uh, accept the message, and so uh, being that uh, we can be swayed by uh, our relatives, he was in a limbo where to, uh, he didn't know if to accept the message or not to accept it. When he first heard the message, he rejected it. 
because he felt that it was contrary to the established teachings of the Adventist Church concerning the law of God. Thus he sided with Brother Uriah Smith and Judge Morrison in their disavowal of the doctrine. It was during this time that he first realized that Sister White was in full agreement with Jonas and Wagoner. This knowledge led him to question Miss White's position as the Lord's special messenger. After a short time of struggle he made with Sister White and his doubts were dissolved. He later recalled how were these uh, doubts uh, uh, dissolved. J. Schwarzman continued, So I went to have a visit with her in her tent at her Ottawa meeting. I told her I had always thought and believed that she was a prophet. So at that time she was not to him uh, a prophet because she was siding with Wagon and Jonas. Yet the leading men had seen that uh, what uh, these two young brothers were preaching was heresy. But I was disturbed by the Minneapolis episode. I had thought to Ras Smith and Judge Morrison were right. These were leading brethren, these were old men in Adventism, and then we have young men of the age of 31 and 38 coming with a message contrary to what these old men, grey-headed men, were preaching. And so, do you know why J.H. Morrison left the conference early? Sister White asked her, her J. Schwarzler. I replied, yes. Then she told me just what Morrison had said to me, and the revelation of her apparently superhuman knowledge of that private, confidential conversation frightened me. I realized that here was one who knew secrets. Sister White told me of her guide in Europe who had uh, stretched his hands out and said, there are mistakes being made on both sides in this controversy. Then she added that the law in Galatians is not the real issue of the conference. Now you start understanding the message and uh, it is uh, opposition. And the, those who are opposing the message, uh, let me pause and say that uh, they didn't understand the message uh, because the issue was not the law in Galatians, as uh, Washburn will just uh, say in a few seconds. And what was the real problem? Uh, was it the law in Galatians? Let us hear Washburn testimony then. If it is true, then we can take it as a, a, a reason why uh, many people could not comprehend the 1888 message. And so uh, I pick it. Then she added that the law in Galatians is not the real issue of the conference. The real issue is righteousness by faith. E.J. Wagoner can teach righteousness by faith more clearly than I can, said Sister White. Now, you can understand why Sister White said that she had been presenting this message for the last 40 years and uh, yet uh, no one was able to understand it. Why is it that uh, she had been presenting it for 40 years, 45 years, and no one was understanding it, but when someone else presented it, all her fiber said, Amen. The secret lies in the statement that Washburn has just spoken on the screen that uh, E.J. Wagona can teach righteousness by faith more clearly than I can, said Sister White. Now, that is humility, that is humbleness. You don't find that uh, there's a man among us or a prophet who will be among us and say that somebody else can teach something more clearly than they. When you see the pride that is going on among the ministers and uh, the church members, the laity, the clergy, you understand that the Lord cannot use them because there is no humility. And uh, the secret behind the message of righteousness by faith is laying the glory of man in dust so that uh, Christ may be lifted up. But uh, in as much as men sh will still uh, put themselves in places where they can be deemed as gods and worshipped and practice kingly powers and queenly powers, then the message of righteousness by faith cannot be realized among us. And that is the problem that we are having. 1888, it is diagnosis, analysis, and it is solution. And this in part C, we are dealing with the message and it is continued opposition. Why is there a lot of pos opposition in understanding the themes of righteousness by faith and the message we have for this time? It is because no one can issue a statement that uh, Sister White issued to, uh, J, uh, uh, to Washburn. I repeat the statement in your hearing, the real issue is righteousness by faith. E.J. Wagner can teach righteousness by faith more clearly than I can, said uh, Sister White. Why, Sister White, I, I say, do you mean to say that E.J. Wagner can teach it better than you can with all your experiences? Sister White replied, yes, the Lord has given him special light on that question. I have been wanting to bring it out more clearly, but I could not have brought it out as clearly as he did. But when he brought it out at Minneapolis, I recognize it. This is a report of interview with Elder J. Schwarzman 
by R.J. Willan, Roberta J. Willan, in June 4, 1950. And so uh, let us uh, then now go back to the history where we, we left it, and uh, you can now start understanding the, the real issues at stake in this uh, message of righteousness by faith. It is that a man is still exalted and put in a position where God should be put, and uh, uh, it is so hard to find men who can humble themselves and uh, really uh, accept that the Lord can use another person more mightily than uh, they, they are being used. And so long as there is still this uh, kind of infancy among us and uh, people jostling for positions and now not uh, uh, admitting that uh, God is bringing together different instrumentalities that he will use uh, uh, to bring out the message more clearly. So long as we cannot come together uh, and uh, acknowledge the working of the Lord, uh, then uh, it will be not easy to recognize uh, the message when uh, it comes to us uh, again. So look at what is happening, the message itself, and uh, it is um, continued opposition. I pick it uh, from the history where we left. We had just uh, looked at this slide. I have heard the question asked, what do you think of this slide that these men are presenting? Why I have been presenting it for the last 45 years? And no one was understanding the message of righteousness by faith, even though the prophetess was uh, bringing them, it to them. But uh, when Wagner and uh, Jonas brings it out, the fiber of her being said amen because she could not present the points more clearly than uh, the two. This is what I have been trying to present before your minds. When Brother Wagner brought out these ideas in Minneapolis, it was the first clear teaching on this subject from any human lips I had heard, excepting the conversation between myself and my husband. I have said to myself, it is because God has presented it to me in vision that I see it so clearly, and they cannot see it because they have never heard it presented to them as I have. And when another presented it, every fiber of my heart said amen. So we continued on. And now, now look at the setup of Minneapolis and what is happening in this meeting with this kingly power and men being put in the position of God instead of letting Christ be seen and magnified and man being laid his glory in dust. Because the whole message, as I said, of righteousness by faith is laying the glory of man in dust and uh, putting Christ and his divinity where it should be that uh, all power is given in his hands to... Uh, give the merits and the charms of his love uh, and the power to be able to have the, uh, the character of God and uh, it will be replicated in obedience to the Ten Commandments. She says, I was invited, we continue with the message and its opposition, I was invited to speak the next Sabbath in, in the tabernacle. But afterwards, because the impressions were so strong that I had changed, I think the brother felt a little sorry he had asked me. Two elders visited me on Sabbath morning, and I was asked by one what I was going to speak upon. Now, th these are mere men asking the prophetess what sh she shall be speaking upon, because their minds have been worked on with kingly power, no humility, and no humbleness of the heart. I say, brethren, you leave that matter with the Lord and Sister White, for neither the Lord nor Sister White will need to be dictated to by the brethren as to what subject she will bring before them. I am at home in Battle Creek on the ground we have broken through the strength of God and we ask not permission to test the desk in the tabernacle. I take it as my nightful position accorded me of God, but there is Brother Jonas who cannot feel as I do and who will not wait an invitation from you. You should do your duty in regard to this matter and open the way before him. The elder stated they did not feel free to invite him to speak until they had consulted Brother Smith to know whether he would sanction it, for Elder Smith was older than they. Now, what does, uh, uh, let us uh, put uh, things in uh, their own perspective. What does uh, age have to do with the revelations from God? Yes, we understand that uh, gray-haired men have wisdom from God. But that, that does not give them a license to uh, say what men shall say on the pulpit or what shall not be said on the pulpit. Uh, it's some kind of bigotry to start dictating to people what they shall be speaking on the pulpit. And this is what is happening with many ministries until they know 
what you shall be speaking, you cannot be allowed on the pulpit. We have gospel order, yes, and I understand it. Um, and uh, the flock has to be uh, shielded from uh, uh, heresies from the pulpit. But uh, when men start having prejudice because they disagree with other men on some little things, and now they have to dictate uh, the sermons and uh, have to inquire what people shall be speaking as if uh, they are the guardians of the truth and uh, they, are, uh, they are taking the prerogative of the Holy Spirit. Some um, uh, voice have to be heard clearly and with a, a loud note and uh, a sound note so that uh, people may be warned of uh, the kingly power that is coming in in the church or in these independent ministries that we have. And so, Sister White says that uh, Jonas has no power to speak on the pulpit as she would have the power to do so. And she says, you should do your duty in regard to this matter and open the way before him. If you have to allow him speak, say that he may speak. If you can't allow that, then let us know what will happen. The elders stated they did not feel free to invite him to speak until they had consulted Brother Smith to know whether he would sanction for Elder Smith was older than they. Now, this reminds me of uh, uh, the men that uh, visited Job, and you had Elihu there seated all the time listening to what they were speaking, and what, what they were speaking was contrary to what God would say about Job. And he said that, I have waited for this long to hear from gray-headed men to see if there is wisdom in them and they will speak for God. But what I have found that uh, they, they are not speaking for God. And so this issue of Brother Smith thinking that uh, he was older than this younger um, brethren and then they could not speak without his sanction is uh, clearly, uh, I can say, a, um, a mind which is not being worked on with God but, but uh, Satan was having his way. I say, then, do this at once. If Brother Smith has to be consulted, let him be consulted. Do this at once for time is precious and there is a message to come to these people and the Lord requires you to open the way for the light to come to the people of God. This is the 1888 Messages Part C. We are dealing with uh, the message and its opposition. After seeing the things happening which were happening and uh, people not opening their hearts, she says in some place that their hearts were padlocked. And so she says, I was confirmed in all I had stated in Minneapolis. And what is this? That a reformation must go through the churches. Now you have to understand that um, the delegates who came to Minneapolis in 1888, there were three camps that developed. That is the camp of uh, E.G. Uh, e. White and uh, Wagona, E.T. Jones and Willie White. And then there is the camp of uh, Elder Kilgo, Elder Morrison, and we have Uriah Smith, the president himself, G.I. Butler. And then we have the younger men and some other older men who were confused who should they follow in that camp meeting? Is it the camp of Sister White, Wagona, and A.T. Jones, or is it the camp of the president, that is G.I. Butler, Elder Kilgo, Uriah Smith, and the camp and who are opposing the meeting? Uh, Haskell was in the middle of the park and uh, some other brethren there. And so it was so hard in, in so much that uh, the message that was to be carried back to the churches was not carried back to the churches because uh, there was a lot of division and misunderstanding of what was going on and so Sister White had some choice words to speak. And uh, 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 before I continue with the history, I'll, I'll just put something on the screen for us to think about again. Uh, what, uh, sh the meeting reached a crisis, by the way, and uh, this is what uh, she had uh, to say. Uh, you give me a little minute, I'll, I'll be right there. Uh, So uh, many had padlocked their hearts, and uh, she had to say this, uh, that uh, the, this was uh, a time to give the people a chance. I hope to get there in a little while, that uh, this uh, was uh, a time to give the people a chance if um, the, the conference will not let the message go on. Now, I'll read this. It's a, a lengthy one, but uh, we are learning, and uh, we don't have a, a hurry in this learning. 
When I have been made to pass over the history of the Jewish nation, reflecting on Minneapolis 1888, and this is 1888, page 152, paragraph 5, the meeting reached a crisis that she had to issue this statement. When I have been made to pass over the history of the Jewish nation and uh, have seen where they stumbled because they did not walk in the light, I have been led to realize where we as a people will be if we refuse the light God will give us. Eyes have ye, but ye see not. Ears, but ye hear not. Now breath and light has come to us, and we want to be where we can grasp it. And God will lead us out one by one to him. I see your danger, and I, warn, I want to warn you. Continued on, she says, Now, this is the last minister's meeting we will have unless you wish to meet together yourselves. If the ministers will not receive the light, I want to give the people a chance. Perhaps they may receive it. God did not raise me up to come across the plains to speak to you. And you sit here to question his message and question whether Sister White is the same as he used to be in years gone by. I have in many things gone way back and given you that which was given me in years past. Because then you acknowledge that Sister White was right. But somehow it has changed now and Sister White is different, just like the Jewish nation. And so you can now understand this statement that she makes that uh, uh, I was confirmed in all Minneapolis that uh, reformation must go through the churches. Reform must be made for spiritual weakness and blindness were upon the people who had been blessed with great light and precious opportunities and privileges. As reformers, they had come out of the denominational churches, but they now act a part similar to that which the church has acted. We hope that there will not be the necessity for another coming out. While we will endeavor to keep the unit of the spirit in the bonds of peace, we will not with pen or voice cease to protest against bigotry. And that is what was going in with the leaders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in that time. It was pure bigotry that uh, uh, the leaders of that time had to be consulted to allow somebody like Jonas and Wagner to speak on the pulpit because they believed he was in error. And uh, the only person that could have her way was uh, the prophetess because uh, they somewhat or somehow um, uh, revered her because they believed that, that she was a prophet. Just it, it, uh, it resonates with uh, Herod that uh, he could not put in prison John because he believed he was a prophet. So the leaders could not hinder Ejewite from speaking because they believed she was a prophet. But then they could not allow Wagona and Jonas to speak on the pulpit because they were prejudiced against them. And then she says that uh, if uh, these brethren have to be consulted, if uh, this Wagona and Jonas have to speak, then they should be consulted faster because time is not on the side. And then the messages have to go to the churches and it was being hindered. And if the leaders could not accept that to happen, then they may know that uh, they will give the people a chance and not go through the regular channels. In fact, um, uh, she later said that the regular channels be better broken up like the porter's ports if uh, they can't be converted. God has sent a message which he wishes you to receive. Continued on with Minneapolis 1888, part C, the message, and it is continued opposition. God has sent you a message which he wishes you to receive, a message of light and hope and comfort for the people of God. It is not for you to choose the channel through which the light shall come. The Lord desires to heal the wounds of his sheep and lambs through the heavenly balm of the truth that Christ is our righteousness. May God forbid that it shall be said of you, the deceased have ye not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick, neither have you bound up that which was broken, neither have you brought again that which was driven away, neither have you sought that uh, which was lost. Now, this... Um, also remind me of uh, one thing that um, uh, ye enter not, ye enter not, and you will not allow those uh, who are trying to enter to enter in. That is Matthew chapter 23 verses 13. Let us hear what uh, the true testimony speaks. Matthew chapter 23 verses 13. The Lord speaks uh, to his church in that time as he speaks to his church here then. 
we read and whatsoever let me highlight it so that uh, we may read together in a good way and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted but now here is the statement i want but woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men for ye neither go in yourself neither shall neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in now look at this statement by um, sister white that uh, uh, may god forbid that it shall be said of you the deceased have yet ye not strengthened they, they hinder the people from hearing the message neither have ye healed uh, uh, that which was sick neither have you bound up that which was broken neither have you brought again that which was driven away neither have you sought that which was lost they are not accepting the message and they are not willing that uh, it may go to the other churches the the war spoken to the pharisees actually will apply to these people and so uh Continued on, may the Lord help us. The watchmen on the, Zion, on the walls of Zion are asleep. Many have no burden of the work. They have no positive warning to give. There are many who have heard the message for this time and have seen its results. And they cannot but acknowledge that the work is good. But from fear that some will take extreme positions and that fanatism may arise in our ranks, they have permitted their imagination to create many obstacles to hinder the advance of the work. And they have presented these difficulties to others, expatiating on the dangers of accepting the doctrine. They have sought to counteract the influence of the message of truth. Suppose they should succeed in these efforts, what will be the result? The message to arouse a lukewarm church should cease, and the testimony exalting the righteousness of Christ will be silenced. Now this is what the devil has been uh, trying to do many years that the message will not come to the people and they remain in lukewarm state, which is Laodicean, and so that uh, the righteousness of Christ will be silenced. And because the righteousness of Jesus Christ is silenced, the people have not come to the full stature and the measure of the man Jesus Christ so that the church may translate unto his church a spotless church without any spot or any defect of such kind. And so it is the determined work of Satan that uh, no other awakening may take place. And we read on uh, that uh, suppose that prejudice should uh, do it is baseful work. Suppose the work should be given into the hands of these opposers and fault finders. And they should be permitted to give to the church the doctrine and the labor they desire to give. Will they present anything better than the Lord has sent to his people at this time through his chosen agents, that is Wagona and uh, Jonas? Will the message of the doubters arouse the churches from their lukewarmness? Will it is influence tend to give in a zeal to uplift the souls of the people of God? Have those who have opposed the light openly or in secret been giving the people the good that will nourish their souls? Have they been presenting the message with the time which the time demands that the calm may be purified from all moral defilement? Have they anything to offer to take the place of the truth which has been given with the fervor and zeal to prepare the way of the Lord's coming. Now, those are uh, uh, important questions that the prophet is asking, that uh, have these people who have opposed these uh, messages given some message that uh, will arouse the church? The answer can be found here. Uh, uh, the, 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 the answer can be found here. That is uh, in the same uh, manuscript, uh, page uh, 560, paragraph 4, and uh, I'll project it so that uh, we may read together. What had be they been doing? They are opposing the message, which will uh, rise the church from lukewarmness, but uh, what have been the they been doing, according to the question that have been asked? You will meet with those who will say, you are too excited, too much excited over the ma this matter. You are too much in earnest. This is manuscript uh, uh, of 1888 message. You should not be rich be te reaching for the righteousness of Christ and making so much of that. You should preach the law. As a people, we have preached the law until we are as dry as the hills of Gilboa that had, had neither dew nor rain. 
we must preach Christ in the law and there will be a sap and nourishment in the preaching that will be as food to the famishing flock of God. We must uh, not trust in our own merits at all, but in the merits of Jesus of Nazareth. Our eyes must be anointed with eye salve. Remember the message of Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3. We must draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to us. If we come in his own appointed way, or that you may go forth as the disciples did after the day of Pentecost, and then you, your testimony will have a living ring, and souls will be converted to God. But uh, how can they do that when they oppose the message of righteousness by faith, and they have been preaching the law until they have come as, become as dry as uh, uh, the hills of Gilboa, yet opposing the message that the Lord has given to the church to arouse it from it is uh, uh, lukewarmness. This could not achieve anything, and uh, that is what uh, uh, brought a lot of uh, tension uh, uh, in the meeting uh, itself. And so, let us continue with uh, this history. It is uh, interesting to put these pieces together and see uh, the di diagnosis, analysis, and the solution of the 1888 uh, uh, problem. There is a bracing of, my, of the mind, an opposition of the soul brought to the investigation of the scriptures. This leaves such as souls where Satan can impress them. In Minneapolis, God gave precious gems of truth to his people in new settings. So, um, we understand that um, when the latter end comes, it will be the old truth being set in a new light, being put in its right perspective. And uh, we are told that it may be falling amongst us, but we are not receiving it because we cannot comprehend it. Why? Because we have not had an experience with Jesus. The problem with Minneapolis is that the old truth was being set in a new light, but because they were used to their own way of doing things and their own methods and trusting in self, the message became to them as a heresy. And uh, uh, we can uh, read in this quote, continue reading in this quote what um, was happening. Uh, we, in Minneapolis, God gave precious gems of truth to his people in new settings. This light from heaven by some was rejected with all the stubbornness the Jewish manifested in rejecting Christ. And there was much talk about standing by the old landmarks, but there was evident they knew not what the old landmarks were. Now, how can Sister White say this to brethren who had been in ministry for 50 years? This seems like arrogance and uh, this seems like a lack of respect to the people who have been in the message for all these years. But she's saying they knew not what the old landmarks were because they were saying that let us stand with the old landmarks while they were opposing the same landmarks being brought uh, uh, to them in a new light. Be because you understand when the uh, latter rain comes, it is uh, the, 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 the showers or the dew of uh, the former rain morphing into uh, the rain to make uh, uh, the latter end to make uh, the harvest uh, mature for the uh, the crops mature for the harvest. So we continue. There was evident and there was reasoning from the world that uh, commended itself to the conscience, but the minds of men were fixed, sealed against the entrance of life because they had decided it was a dangerous error removing the old man landmarks when it was not moving a peg of the old landmarks. But they had perverted ideas of what constituted the old landmarks. Now, I'd like to read another statement which uh, will uh, really complement that, uh, that um, this is uh, when a man thinks that they are inspired and they stand against things, and they are like a, a drunkard who is on liquor. This is, I think, uh, a statement uh, that uh, we need to hear. They thought that they had inspiration of what was the old landmark, but there was no inspiration in that. Manuscript 41, 1900, there is a disease of the spiritual faculties when a man or a woman fancies that he sees things which do not exist. What were these things that were they thought that they were existing which did not exist. Let us back up for a minute before we continue with the quote. Here we, we read, there was evidence and uh, there was reasoning from the world that commended itself to the conscience, but the minds of men were fixed, sealed against the entrance of light because they had decided it was a dangerous error removing the old landmarks. 
when it was not moving a peg of the old landmarks, but they had perverted ideas of what constituted the old landmarks. What is the problem? That um, uh, the people thought that uh, some truth was being taken away. But uh, we are told here uh, in manuscript 41 that there is a disease of the spiritual faculties when a man or a woman fancies that he sees things which do not exist. They are seeing that the old landmarks are being taken away when there is no landmark that is being taken away. He is intoxicated with an, an illusion as verily as the liquor drinker becomes intoxicated by using strong being. There is an inspiration but not of God. The mental faculties are perverted. Let every soul make God his trust and obtain an experience that is wholesome and healthy. Continuing on with the 1888 messages, uh, it is a uh, message and continued opposition. The passing of the time in 1844 was a period of great events. As we come to almost an end, we have like 10 minutes. Opening to under astonished eyes the cleansing of the sanctuary transpiring in heaven and having decided relation to God's people upon the earth. Also the first and second and, uh, and what? And the second angel's messages and the third. Unfiling the banner of which was inscribed the commandment of God and the faith of Jesus. One of the landmarks under the message was the temple of God seen by his truth, loving people in heaven and the earth containing the law of God. The light of the Sabbath of the fourth commandment flashed its strong rays in the pathway of the transgressors of God's law. The immortality of the wicked is an old landmark. I can call to mind nothing more that can come under the head of the old landmarks. All this cry about changing the old landmarks is all imaginary. So, while men thought that um, they were standing for the old landmarks, it was an inspiration like a drunkard who was on a liquor and there was nothing that uh, was an old landmark they were standing upon. We have so to be careful of uh, what we may think is an opposition to protect what is called the light when it is a hindrance of getting the light to the people. And so God is calling upon his people to revisit the spirit that was there in Minneapolis. And uh, what is this that the Lord is speaking to us at such a time? Now we have been getting just a glimmering of faith. I'm thankful that the Lord is uh, in this time uh, uh, restoring this message and the people are trying uh, are starting to embrace it and to start to understand it and um, appreciate it more and get it out in a, a more clear ray of uh, light and with more understanding. And so the prophet says this, that uh, uh, now we have been getting just a glimmering of faith. We have but a little of it, yet it is so very hard for the mind that has been looking on the dark shadows and that has been hanging memories whole all through with these consolate things and pictures that are dropped in mourning, that it seems as though we cannot look upon anything else. But may God help to gather up the jewels of Christ. God help us that we may hang memories uh, whole all through with the rich promises of God. That when Satan shall come to cast his hellish shadow between us and the, cause, and the source of our strength, we may just be armed. We have got the memorials all surrounding us, barricaded with the promises, and we can say, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be on the vine, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. I'm praying that uh, the God of peace may be with us as we continue looking at this message. It is diagnosis, analysis, and solution because the Lord was willing to pour his spirit upon his church at that time but um, it was uh, hindered by men who thought that uh, they were standing on the platform of truth and defending what was preconceived or landmarks when it was uh, the new light shining in a more broader way than uh, what they thought. Another thing that we should be careful is choosing the channels in which the light will come to us. Here is a brother that one years old, Wagona and uh, John is 38 years old, and we have men 50 and 60 years old, and they cannot allow these juniors to speak on the pulpit 
because they believe that the Lord cannot bypass them and use another one to bring the message to the church. As uh, a movement, we should be careful how we react when uh, we hear a message uh, and uh, banish these thoughts of being having uh, 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 our favorite speakers and our favorite teachers. The Lord will bypass the people whom we think will be used as uh, the channels to bring the light. The Lord may bypass me, the Lord may bypass you, but if the Lord chooses to speak to, through the donkey for the truth's sake, then we should accept the truth, not because of the channel, but because uh, it is truth. May God give us uh, 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 peace uh, and strength as uh, we continue worshiping him in truth and spirit, that this Sabbath may be a blessing, and as we continue hearing these messages, that uh, we will make them so practical in our lives. They will bring changes, and the church of God will be ready to sound the loud cry. Shall we uh, humble ourselves for a word of closing our prayer? Our Heavenly Father, thank you for you hear us always when we pray and we seek your presence in uh, humility of the heart and comrade heart. Never have you turned aside a penitent heart uh, that is seeking repentance. And so, Lord, we seek repentance at this hour that uh, we may be able to be used as your channels, as your vessels in the sanctuary to bring out truth to thy people. And Lord, if we shall not be used, but uh, be helpers of those bringing out the truth, Help us not stand on the way and uh, assume kingly powers that uh, we have to be the ones that will be used. And so admonish us, rebuke us, correct us in thy mercy, but in your anger do not visit us. This is our prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.